there's a reckoning coming. I mean, could this mean that 50% of realtors will be gone? Well, they could already be gone. Their 50% could already be gone. We don't know. Welcome to the Real Estate Rundown. We're going to take a look back this year at what some of the expectations were versus reality. And coming up at number one. Well, I was going to say it's getting hot out here in Phoenix now, and it's getting all hot and crazy out there in the marketplace with all kinds of crazy stuff going on. But it's it cold is. in here, and that's why you're wearing a jacket right now. <laughs> <laughs> you got to play, gotta play the Nelly well, That's the problem. There. It gets so, so hot, hot, and the yeah. AC blasts, and then it's cold inside. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. But we, most of us have like a jacket or a flannel that we keep in the office for these cold moments. It is a little <laughs> chilly in here. My toes are freezing. Uh, but yeah, the interest rates, um, those are definitely not cold. They are not cold. They are, they <laughs> are coming up and in up. hot. Well, I think it's so funny when they talk about like, oh, well, typically you will see less houses come on the market when rates are this high. I'm like, well, you obviously haven't experienced the lack of inventory for the last several years that we've had too. So you have like pent up demand where people are now that, that there's still inventory shortage. There's still putting their house on the market, even though it's a high rate. It's usually a less buyer pool, which is why. But we're well, not seeing that right at now. At the beginning of the year, it was forecasted that we were going to see six rate cuts this year. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen one. And now now the forecast... Seen rate hikes. <coughs> Don't now the say rate, that. Don't put that out there. Now the forecast is 1.7 rate cuts this year. 1.7. 1.7. How many more meaningful Fed meetings are there with potential rate cuts? Like uh, four? I think three. Three. Three, yeah. So 1.7 would yeah. mean that maybe no. we see two rate cuts? I, 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 I think maybe one, maybe two. I don't know. We'll see. Jay's adjusted prediction, yeah. one rate cut. Uh, there could be zero. Well, okay. They, they, they could just be pushing us off. They could. Like, oh, well, you know, but, but there's but, an election. There's an election. Usually. But, I mean. Just shoot, they're going to, they're both going to pitch. weird election. Vote for me, and I'll get the rates down. Shoot, oh, that's absolutely. gonna be the pitch. And Dang. what's crazy is now, <laughs> now the now the <clears throat> politician, both of them are saying like, you know, the Trump, Trump came out for for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, and now like, you know, they just passed a a, a <clears throat> law for the banks to be able to to self custody, and it's it's just. It's, there's there's some a lot there's a lot of things going on. Yeah. Well, the Ethereum- Biden's doing the 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 um, self police banks. No, it's the uh, the he's the student loans again. Yep. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, forgiveness. Oh yeah, student, student loan forgiveness. Loan. Well, I think like something interesting happened with the Ethereum ETF. Like the SEC yep. was oh, there was like that was crazy. Yeah, I know because it wasn't supposed to get approved, and then all of a sudden like something happened. Like got approved instantly. Something happened where they gave guidance, and then bam, they're approved. I was stoked because Ethereum hiked. It went crazy. Yep. I know you two. You two are definitely. I don't have a bunch of Ethereum. Just it didn't go crazy yet. It's, yeah, it's, it's not crazy. It's crazy. crazy. <clears throat> it still went up like fifteen percent, more than that. More 20%, than that, like yeah. it went up like twenty-seven percent. Yeah, it went up. I mean, it it, was it a, came back down. Yeah, it chilled out a bit, but it definitely had a solid run for several days. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yep. Um, so hopefully your accounts looked great for a yep. minute. <laughs> <laughs> You know, did you sell or did so, you hold? So interest rates, interest rates definitely did not do what we thought they were going to do. Inventory, it seems, has risen. <laughs> Shocker. Uh, with rates currently where they're at, the buyer pool has been diminished. So we see, we see rates kind of driving <clears throat> that bus. But something else that's interesting is prices, though. Prices have still remained relatively high. CoreLogic came out and said that in March they were still uh, highest, they, the highest that they've been. Nationally. Yeah, we just, yeah, there, isn't there like a new high, median high that happened recently? I know I saw that in an article mm-hmm. somewhere. So that's really wild when you think about that, just because, again, with, I mean, yes, it, does that align with inflation and the cost of goods and everything else that continues to, to be extraordinarily high, which is why the rates haven't dropped because they're continuing to try to keep that high to keep the inflation or fight inflation. So they say, but well, definitely, the, the definitely Fed's a trying curious to fight, fight inflation, but the government's spending more money. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're fighting against each other. The Fed's yeah. like, we're keeping high interest rates. Well, why? Because yep. the government's spending a bunch of money. The they printing presses to, are still rolling, brother. Yep. <laughs> All right. So we have an idea. We have an idea on how we could solve this 
kind of crunch that we find ourselves in, especially if you are one of the we that enjoys a very favorable interest rate. Uh, So in the UK and in Australia, they do something called porting when it comes to your mortgage. And instead of the mortgage being attached to a property, it's attached to a person. And so when you move to a new home, you can port your mortgage to your new property. And we thought that sounded like a pretty darn good idea. Well, it's a brilliant idea, right? Because imagine that you could maintain your lower rate and take your mortgage with you. Mm. Oh, that's not awesome. much, not much different than a car, right? It's just switching cars, right? Throwing some money into another one. Well, Negative I, equity. Yeah, I, I get why they Negative don't equity. do that here, right? Because that, the, the mortgage is on the house because the house is the asset, right? It's a it's a fixture to the property, and that's what they're banking on is in the event of. Def- in the event of default, they have the asset and they could liquidate it to minimize their damages. Well, I think mortgage servicers aren't going to like this. I mean, they're... No, service... I I would think that anyone in lending wouldn't like this. I mean, you know, I I forget what it is. Like, uh, the average home sale has an economic impact of, I think, $120,000 each home sale, which is insane. Insane. Uh, There's got to be some sort of figure when it comes to the average loan. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. obviously a factor in that hundred and twenty. dollars but like independently al- alone, uh, anytime a mortgage is made, there's probably some sort of economic impact of that mortgage. And so the results of that could be catastrophic. But I would gladly pay like a porting transfer fee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for your like a half a percent interest rate. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, to maintain. But imagine if we could freely move to another property without having to give that up, how much more movement we would see in our market. Well, or like you had like, some type of like pricing bracket, right? They like, let's say that you're in the 500 price bracket and you want to relocate to North Carolina and you can look and see what's in your pricing bracket. Or if you want to upgrade, like we were talking about before, right? You got a $500,000, but some good things have happened. You want to upgrade to that million dollar price bracket. Now you got a mortgage at 500 at your old rate. Then you can go get a second mortgage at today's rates at the, at the new 500. So how many mortgage you, mortgages can you port? That's yeah, that's really. why I was laughing. Yeah. So I could see people going like, I want to they're like these five ports in, two point five million. I oh, can't afford it. Bankruptcy. Sorry. <laughs> Guess my porting them. days are over yeah, for seven yeah. years. Your por- your porting banned. <laughs> no more ports for you. I'm sure we are <clears throat> way oversimplifying this process, <clears throat> but course. we kind of were reading about it and thought that it seemed like a cool solution. And I don't see, I don't hear anybody talking about it in the U.S. and It was kind of a a neat idea. Hey, in other news, I find this to be extremely interesting. So Mr. Cooper, one of the largest servicers of mortgages across the U.S., Mm -hmm. uh, one of their own subsidiaries, so they own this company called Zome, and it's an auction site. And basically what they're trying to do is get homeowners to list their house on Zome without an agent and sell it DIY. Wow, I know. So the servicer's trying to go around their real estate agent. Uh, yeah. I wonder how much they're charging for that. Uh, there's got to be a fee. There's got to be a fee. I mean, they're, they're obviously making money somehow, but... Uh, well, and like this is something for us as an agent community, I would say we really need to pay attention to. I agree. Because when you really look at this, right, there's, there's 350 million Americans, approximately 160 million homes across America. Well... Guess, guess who is sending them some kind of statement every single month? Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper and all of those servicers. They absolutely are, I don't want to say controlling, but they have a strong mind share of those people. So imagine if they, on their service statement, <clears throat> thinking about selling, here, click here, check here, mm. go here, right? Yeah. So now massive, massive advertising all done through email and with a simple click of a button. And it does not cost them a dime more than what they're already sending to send you your monthly statement. And yep. so it's... it's. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying the, 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 co- the opportunity it's, cost there literally cost them nothing. Yeah. And they're like, it's actually kind of a no-brainer move for to, to, to me for some of these servicing companies to, to figure this out. Well, and if you're the seller, you know, you have the benefit of putting your house on their site and then they're claiming to have, you know, just tens of thousands of buyers Mm -hmm. that are ready, willing, and and able to make an offer on your property. And we know that oftentimes those buyers are looking for steep discounts. And so I think that this is something that we need to keep an eye on as an agent community. And if you've not already 
provided your sellers with tools and options such as a Zudelio, you really ought to be checking that out because you're you're now having to compete on so many different fronts. Uh, absolutely, right? The the digitization of real estate, as we all know, started several years ago and it only is picking up steam. I mean, regardless of whether you're a fan of iBuyers or not, the reality of it is is th their thesis of providing a more simple frictionless transaction, they were a thousand percent right on. Now, their cost and economic models and everything else is obviously still being determined as, as we speak if they can survive. But as far as the narrative of their mission, thousand percent right <clears throat> so did they did they already roll that out or are they going to roll it out so they've yes that's what i missed sorry yeah so i read about it in let's see i read about it on housing wire and let me read it right now uh it sounds like well zome has already been launched and zome is a subsidiary of mr cooper so this came out may 22nd and it said online real estate auction marketplace zome is launching a diy sales platform for investors platform users will need will not need to use a real estate agent to complete their transaction so, so what other um auction sites are out there well there's the sites big on. one auction Auction, I think, dot com yeah, I think we'll probably is see the more biggest. Of these, uh, if, they charge you know. like a three percent fee, though. Yeah. That's yeah well, and they and they usually even have the buyer like they'll verify funds. They'll have to have a deposit. There's there's definitely some hoops that they that they verify in order to be a buyer on these platforms. But again, as the demand comes in more, imagine if they it's a verified buyer like like mm -hmm. we've talked about before, where mm -hmm. you can check the assets, you can you know or get pre qualified by you know, uh, a bank that Mr. Cooper is going to service for, right? Wells Fargo, for example, because I think that wasn't Nation Star, M Mr. Cooper bought Nation Star, and it, it basically backtracks to Wells Fargo, I think, so if I'm not mistaken. So the CEO of Zoom <coughs> said, we anticipate that the real estate landscape is going to continue to evolve rapidly, mm -hmm. and Zoom plans to be at the forefront of that change. Yep. Investors are looking for options when it comes to buying or selling a home, and they want to be in more control of the process. That's the reason we're constantly optimizing our platform to meet buyers and sellers, not only where they are, but where they want to be. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, love it or hate it, it's, it is a good idea. I mean, just like you guys were talking about the reach that they had, oh. I could literally see, you know, if somebody doesn't want to work with an agent mm -hmm. and doesn't want to go through yep. the process of putting their property in the MLS, which, you know, of course there's ways to do that without, you know, an agent quote unquote. I mean, obviously it's a licensed agent who does it, but you guys know what I'm talking about, like a FISBO or something. Right. Um, could be a great alternative solution, right? And now all of a sudden you almost have another MLS. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I, and, <clears throat> and, you know, I think that that's kind of what we're going to see happen. That's what I think so too. I think too. there's going to be a, it's, which is, I, I don't. I don't know if that's good. Because uh, it's more, it'll it's, be. It'll be. It'll probably be very fragmented. Yeah, it's going to look look in more places. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. To find it'll be find massive disruption for for a minute, <clears throat> and then it'll probably synthesize back down. I could totally see that happening. Hmm. I I agree. It's it's definitely something. I agree with Keith though. It's it, I could see consumers liking the idea. What I always find fascinating is if you look at the data on when people sell Fizbo. They sell for a lot less, less than they would have sold for if they had an agent. And so <clears throat> I think the sad thing is, is that there will be people that use something like this and they think that, you know, they're doing well for themselves, but they really just have no idea that they could have done so much better. And so like for me, like with my kind of my heart is educating the consumers so that, yes, this is an option for you. But if you're going to take this option, at least know what the difference would be had you listed. So you know that price, Absolutely. that cost that, yeah, that you're losing. Yeah, because they're not going to have all the buyers on there looking at looking at homes. So if you get, no. you know. Well, like th this is something I used, I used to tell my real estate team, right? Like at the end of the day, we it, then and even now, I would say obviously it's a, and I mean this with all due respect with what I'm about to say to all my, you know, fellow agent friends, everything else out there. It's like we're a necessary evil, or necessary <laughs> pro part of the process. Not everybody wants to put their house on the market. I mean, think about it. Who wants to get their house ready? 
Who wants to who wants to have people and strangers walk through their house? Who wants to basically announce your what your largest financial things going on to your public? Clean up all the dog poop before, before every yeah. showing. Yeah, I know. No, <laughs> nobody wants to do those things. Like if you could get top dollar and you knew that you were getting top dollar and it made made financial sense or like we've even uh, our narrative, you'll give up a little bit so you could just click that sell button and leave when you want to and control all the timetables. Like Again, the consumer has spoken that that is absolutely what they're looking to do. Absolutely. Yeah, as long as the number makes sense. Exactly. Yeah, as long as the number. It can't works. be too much of one way or the other, and 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 and, and they'll do it. So things like this is going to make absolutely about yeah. half the agents' population just disappear, right? I mean, it could. You know, there was a article that came out. Uh, Colby actually shared it. It was from Business Report, and it was talking about how the slow U.S. housing market has real estate agents leaving the field in droves. Mm -hmm. And they they quoted this. They said that a survey of 2,000 real estate agents conducted earliest, earlier this year by the Consumer Federation of America found 49% sold fewer than two homes in 2023. Wow. So there's a reckoning coming. I mean, could this mean that 50% of realtors – will be gone. Well, they could already be gone. Their 50% could already be gone. We don't know because NAR they're NAR's no longer, not publishing they're the not data. Publishing the data so. I, I don't think that that's actually the case yet. I, I don't think we're going to see a washout that quick. No? No. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, everybody has to renew every day, right? So that those numbers should be just dropping like, like flies when you really think about it. I mean, not to mention it's – not only is there less deals, not only is there economic pressure, it's also going to be harder for us to get paychecks, right? With, with the buyer compensation leaving the MLS, like that's, you now have to start talking about how you get paid as a buyer's agent and telling them up front that they have to pay you in order to work with you, right? That's not a conversation virtually 100% of us didn't like have to have. have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of a good point that you brought up too. I mean, speaking of that too, I have to do my 24 hours by the end of July and I haven't started. Uh, and that's not like me. Cause I'm, I get, I'm by the end of I, June I get, and I haven't started. I get way ahead. <laughs> but anyway, if I'm not doing any business or I'm doing less than two deals a year, I have a decision to make. Do yep. I want to invest yep. all that time plus the money, you know, it's not ridiculously expensive, but if you're not doing anything, that's, that's a lot of investment. You know, so that's expensive. Right. Not, there's that there's physical cost. Off, right. Know? There's so just physical like you said, cost. People yeah. have to do it every day. And, well, you know, what effect is that going to bring in play? It's definitely having one, right? We know that. And well, we don't know that really. Well, I, I do. <laughs> I do. Because I do, any forum, Reddit, Facebook groups, yeah. any anything, and you have agents that are posting, looking for ideas for side hustles, just bemoaning how they have no transactions and they need to leave the industry or, you know, basically saying, I left, I'm done, I'm not selling. I mean, I'm seeing these no, posts like all Well, the in time. that same article, it says that the National Association of Realtors had nearly one point. Uh, 1.5 million agents registered as of mid-April, down more than 100,000 from 2022. Right. So we were already seeing yeah. that number just yeah. kind of plummeting. Was that like 8 or 9%? 7, 8, 9%? Uh, I'm not going to yeah. try mental so, math. Yeah, I was going to say that's 7%. <laughs> seven, seven percent, yeah. I mean, at the, at the <clears> end of the day, right, like I think the real washout is going to be over that next 24 months. I think, I think Kayla, you're, you're right. It's going to be, people are going to test to see if there's any kind of shift. Hey, I'll go ahead and renew this one more time. Or like, what about the people that have had a lot of success and I'll never retire, right? And they, they're, they're financially set. They don't need to renew, but now we're changing how more and more, how things are done being done. They just throw their hands up and be like, ah, I'm done with this real estate stuff. I'm good. I'm sunsetting mm -hmm. there. I think that there could be a lot of that type of, leaving as well the industry is evolving and what we know is most people resist change and if we've been in this for a long time maybe we're less likely to adapt to change or absolutely you know or maybe hold on to a narrative that nothing is really going to change except for paperwork because <laughs> i've been hearing that too it's like oh nothing's mm. really going to change it's just going to be paperwork <laughs> well i think that's that's probably for, <clears throat> for some people for the people that have their, their businesses dialed in. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. That can do, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to be a big deal to them because they already talked to their people about agency and, and who pays for, for, for what. Um, 
So those people are going to be insulated. Mm-hmm. Those teams, brokers, agents. Or that already started shifting around it now. Like we were just talking with somebody earlier where, you know, Legion is not as I think doted on the industry as it, as it once was where now it's more social, it's more live in your database, which to me is, you know, a bit better of a path overall. But when you look at those types of frameworks, as long as these higher powered tools, teams, organizations are priming their agents and the people that are those mouth mouthpieces to their, you know, to their ecosystem, uh, I think that they'll overcome it just, just fine because the value is still there. But how about all the onesies, twosies, which is a massive, massive number. But I think those, those onesies, twosies are going to get picked up by the, the people that are the agents that are, are serious about their business. You know, <laughs> they have a, they have a, yeah, they're going to pick up the a, deals. Yep, yep. So what does this do to the ec- economic models of brokerages that mm. only exist because they have the numbers? Yeah. Like uh, the, the $25 a month. Yeah. Great uh, question. Where, where it's question. like, we don't care if you sell a house because you're paying me every month and you're paying me an E&O fee every year. I mean, and they obviously, it goes down. They, they, mm-hmm. they get less agents that are doing that. And I mean, <laughs> dwindles down very slowly. Yeah, for sure. I think that's why we've seen, we've continued to see EXP do very well. LPT yeah. starting to absolutely crush it. Real yep. continues to, to gain agents. Yep. The different models. Um but yeah, I mean, I, I do wonder about the the economic model of brokerages, especially because <clears throat> of what we know is they, it, a lot of agents think that the brokerage is just crushing it. And in reality, brokerages operate on such a thin <laughs> profit margin. It's insane. And so like, what's going to happen when they lose 20% of their agents, 30% of their agents, 40% the, the, of their agents? That could be their profit margin and that's gone. Ex- that's my point. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, well, and I think so that's mergers, acquisitions. Abso- I think we're going to continue to see that, which is why you saw the, the EXPs, the reels, whatever else. I mean, your, your indie brokers, I mean, t- I it's, can think of in the last five, six years, how many really good size indie brokers have been absorbed. I, mm-hmm. Me too, right? Like it seems like it happens constantly mm-hmm. and- and, and then it's kind of, you know, you kind of just like wonder, we, we just like end up with these big, no choice, big entities. Yep. And then guess what happens? They start pulling more money out of them, out of it. Oh, then they <laughs> raise, the, they raise. Now fees. their caps are yeah, a they, Yeah, they dominate. Yeah, they're, they're split. They control the market. higher and they, you know, it's like, <clears throat> well, where are you going to go? You know? <laughs> no. I guess you could also posit that if they're taking any sort of percentage of commission, home prices are much higher too. Like, sure. Yeah. Well, but. we'll see. See what happens this next year. We could see home prices go down. I mean, obviously, we're gonna we have home prices down in some areas. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Florida seeing, is starting to seeing some major changes in the uh, inventory. Yeah. With uh, with Florida and Texas, I think one thing that which are the two hottest markets, basically yeah, yeah. they were they were super hot. But it's I think one thing that started happening that nobody really saw coming was insurance mm. and <coughs> the ability Those are two to crazy insurance markets. Yeah, and the ability to get insurance. I mean, I know that you know you guys have a direct peek into that on the daily, and and it's tough in some markets to get insurance. Yep. Yeah, if it's close to the water. Or if it's uh, like floodplain, or which you run in, run into in Texas, right? There's tons of Texas that's below sea level, close to the water. Yep. All right. So as we wrap up today's podcast, uh, let's let's do a look ahead because we have we're almost June one. Mm-hmm. Look ahead to the remaining of the year. What do you think? Something that's that's <coughs> going to happen that maybe people won't see coming. I think. We'll see zero rate cuts. I think I don't think people are really taking it serious. Thinking that thinking that that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, I think it's a possibility. I think uh, I think Jerome Powell is he's you know he's an older guy doesn't <laughs> want us to be seen as um, political and he knows that they're in a they're in a pickle. But he keeps saying that there's going to be rate cuts this year. I mean, he did like a month and a half he ago. He did say but that. <laughs> it's not looking pretty for um, for him because uh, a lot of the other uh, Fed chairmen, or, or they call them chairmen, um, they're saying that uh, they, there shouldn't be rate cuts yet because we're, we're still teetering on the, the inflation 
gauge. What about you guys? Keith's got something. Yeah, go Keith. Well, <laughs> it's, <clears throat> it's hard to predict if it's going to be this year or next year. I think it'll be a, a little influx of both. I think that we're going to see more young people come into the market buying houses with a shit ton of cash or all cash because of the crypto space. And we're going to see a massive surge mm. in, in, um, in home buyers underneath the age of 40 than we've seen in, in the last half a decade. Yeah, these guys are taking their they're taking their power back, right? I'm Dude, some the, of the, the stuff the that's awareness? going on in the market right now. Yeah. The freaking um, uh, Polly with the freaking Pepe on Solana from zero market cap to seventy million in two days. You know how many millionaires are being made right uh, now I mean, on certain yeah, things. Anyway, yeah. rabbit hole, but that is going to affect the housing market. Absolutely. Now some of these guys are going to go buy houses, and <laughs> Lamborghinis, and these uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lamborghinis. So cool. You buy a digital currency, and all of a sudden you're just. All like, sudden, that's what he what that all of a sudden we rich. He, he did. Uh, I listened to his his ex call, and there's like thousands of people on it. And he goes, "He's uh, you got an early on this Pepe on Solana. <laughs> you want a Lamborghini? You in the right place." That's how he started the call. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know who that is. He's a massive influencer in the uh, crypto space. But well, anyway, I, I know, I've heard I know Pepe. that's a little kind of in a couple different directions. But I genuinely believe we're going to see a surge in in, uh, in younger people in the housing market within the next tw- in the next uh, so twelve months. So which um, coin should I buy, Keith? Uh, well, you don't have any coin. You, yeah, you, you could, but it's it's already such a high market cap. You got to put in a lot to get, you know, it, uh, it's already made. It's a, a, whole, it's a rabbit hole conversation. Yeah. I, think, I think we should buy Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh-uh. That, w- that wouldn't be a good investment. Or Pug with hat. Pug with scarf. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Pug with flannel. <laughs> Pug with Pug flannel. With flannel. Uh, I, Keith, I think you're right. I really do. I, I think the awareness from the, I don't want to call it like, what is it, Gen, what, Gen Z? Gen Z? Nah, that's like the Gen Alpha, isn't that it? Oh, af- the after Gen yeah. Z? Yeah. Yeah, I think that the, like the awareness for, for them around like how currency it really works, it's I've seen a Way faster. Different. I've seen a faster awakening yeah. around this than anything I feel like I've ever seen in my life. Like the amount of people that, like a year ago, nobody talked about crypto. And I mean, yes, I realize that's not that, true. That, <laughs> you just didn't. Uh, well, I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. but we were. I, I, I'm saying at a larger scale, <laughs> okay. right? And now I feel like everybody talks about it. Everybody's aware uh, of a lot of things. And I mean, and, and it's I think great. it's just your reticular activation. It probably it possibly because a lot of people. I've been talking about crypto. Yeah, ex- right after it's since 2021, super super hard. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. I feel like Even in that. general, this this generation and their awareness and the and the opportunities and looking at it, uh, and, and I would just say like currency in general, how it truly is supposed to work and have it not be monopoly money. And I'll leave it at that. But that that's I think you're right. I could totally see that happening. I think it'd be cool. I think so too. I think also it would be cool. We've talked about this on a different podcast, but I think it'll be cool if we can see your crypto being leveraged for a mortgage. Yeah. So you don't actually have to sell it, right? You can just leverage it. And I think that that's... Yeah, it's property. Because like every time we talk about, you know, like buying a new place or doing something like that, it's always that's like... That's five Bitcoin <laughs> I got to yeah. sell. He does. He'll tell me and he'll be like, and if my Bitcoin, if Bitcoin goes up to X, then we'll lose X. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess we fully anticipate it. That's exactly how most people that have some good money into it look at it. <clears throat> yeah, because it's only it's it's only going up. It might go temporarily down, but <clears throat> we just believe it's. We are yeah, not financial advisors. Step. We do not give financial advice. Except Keith. Keith gives. gives <laughs> 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 no, like Michael Saylor though he gives financial advice. Yeah, that guy I'll, is. <laughs> he definitely does. Well, MIT graduate, dude. I'm listening. Yeah, that guy is smart. Slightly Fun to listen to s- as well. All right, uh, Elliot, what you got? <clears throat> What's going to happen? What's going to surprise, shock, and awe? I don't have anything like over the top other than I just really, I'm a big believer that I think in general, Americans and, and the real estate industry is is resilient. And I think that there's a lot of smart minds out here when you have a, a, a collective and a body as big as this is. 
is I, I think that they're going to continue to to innovate. I think they're it's going to continue. We'll continue to fight back as an incumbent, um, and and continue to have new innovating ways to solve the problem for the consumer because at the end of the day, the consumer is the one who desi- decides. And since that's where the push has been for such a long time, better way, less cost, less issue, I think that we're going to start seeing that, and especially with the, the, rise of, the rise of AI and just completely uh, making it a better, smoother process. Mm. Yeah. So like... I love the broad sweeping statement that That's you can enough. just use anything to fulfill that. I should know. <laughs> should have known you, you'd call me out on that. No, I, saw, I told you. <laughs> Sometimes those are the best predictions. Exactly. Yeah, open, yeah. open up to interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go specific. It's like the I world's coming to an end soon. <laughs> I said it 35 years ago. <laughs> I for think the last thirty five years. There there will be there will be some type of AI showing assistant door opening type thing by the end of this year. Okay. So specifically for door opening. Yep. Showing assistant. All right, interesting. That's um and I'm thinking of like what I got and what I'm feeling, and this already might exist a little with plunk, mm. but I think that there is a need for like real time house prices Mm. Uh, and not just relying on historical data, but like that real time data of what's happening now to predict your home prices. And so I could see that happening. I know that Parcel Labs is working on that for rentals. And I think that's pretty cool uh, because rentals are moving and grooving and coming down a little uh, in a lot of markets. So I think we could see that kind of real-time movement for house prices becoming more mainstream by the end of the year. Hmm. Yeah. The, the, the data and, and awareness around everything is, I think, just going to continue to be better. Agreed. As long as the input is good. And the input is you out there taking listings, meeting with sellers, grabbing that data, uploading it into your MLS. Thank you for doing your part to create an industry (laughs) that has a monopoly (laughs) on your data. (laughs) All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you next one.